The following is a presentation of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. You've always got time for short time. Hey, it's Warren Lopez. David Taylor. Fred Metcalf. Johnny Hendricks. Tony Ramos. Bubba J. Mike Gold. Matthew Modine. The one and only Chael Sonnen. And you are listening to the one and only Short Time Wrestling Podcast by the often imitated and never duplicated Jason Bryant. Now up on the Short Time Wrestling Podcast, heading to Bowie's Creek, North Carolina, to visit with Nathan Kreiser, the first All-American in school history for the Fighting Camels of Campbell University. Nathan, first of all, congratulations, and secondly, welcome to the Short Time Wrestling Podcast. Hi, Jason. Uh, thank you. Thanks for having me. All right, first of all, first All-American in school history. When you transferred in from North Carolina, which is not new to people, there seemed to be a little bit of pressure on you to be the guy that was going to bring Campbell its first All American medal. How how did you how did you deal with that pressure? And what's it finally feel like to be like, all right, finally, I'm done. I got it. I'm on the podium. Yeah, um, there was some pressure, but I had that redshirt year, first year. Um, State Campbell didn't have a postseason; they had APR issues, so I got to get acclimated to the school and kind of get my trade training regimen going there. And um, there was some pressure and. People were calling crazy for leaving Carolina and going to Campbell, especially because they didn't didn't have a postseason. They had that uh, academic trouble, and there was pressure. But I just tried to do my thing, like have my own expectations for myself, and don't worry about what uh, everybody else is saying. And finally, getting on the podium this year was a huge relief. Um, after after I won my round of twelve match, you just see a lot of people like jumping up and down, hugging their coaches. I was just so tired, just kind of put my hands in the air just it's like finally kind of feeling and just like a sigh of relief and had fun I had fun this year at nationals I didn't put too much pressure on myself and just kind of went in like last year let's have fun let's do it and then after getting on the podium got a lot of attention from the school that was awesome they're they're real supportive yeah, because you were so close, your true freshman year, you're in the quarterfinals. You've got Jesse Delgado dead to rights in a cradle. He ends up coming back, winning that match. You fall in the round of 12. You were just so close. How much does that moment, did that moment really still drive you over the next couple of years? That that moment definitely haunted me for a bit too, but then I used it to motivate me and actually give me confidence. Like Delgado, I mean, he won nationals that year, and then I think he won it again the next year. Like. If I had a guy that good, like I had him beat, like if I had a guy that good beat, then I can beat, I can hang with and beat anybody in the weight class. Like all these guys that are tough, but like having, they're not two time national champs. Like if I had a two time national champ beat, like I can beat these guys. And it, it drove me being that close knowing I had it in my grasp and then let it slip away. Like that made me work harder like every day because I, I was always thinking about it. When the decision comes and Kerry takes the job, and Kerry's been on this show about why he took the Campbell job, he said he liked the small town atmosphere. He said he liked raising his kids in that type of atmosphere. And there are kids that, like yourself, that uh, knew Kerry from when his time in Maryland. When he left, was there any any inkling of saying, you know what, I'm still staying here in Chapel Hill, or was it like he's gone, I'm gone? Um, there's definitely some like thinking, especially. Just academics too, not all wrestling. Like Carolina is a great academic school. If you got a degree from there, that definitely helps, like on resumes and stuff. And and um, I didn't know much what Campbell was like. I didn't know if they had good funding or anything, or even what the school was like. But after coming and visiting and um, kind of hearing Kerry explain it, like how um, how much effort the athletic director at Campbell is like putting into the wrestling program, that kind of that kind of helped me decide, and there wasn't um, like Carolina is a fun town. It's like a college town. Campbell, it's pretty much it's small. It's pretty much wrestling and school, which is it is perfect for me. That's all. That's all I really needed, and that that uh, attracted it, me to the school. You had mentioned the academic issues. The previous administration had some issues with. Uh, keeping kids eligible, the APR, which is a, a huge issue with college athletic directors, especially in terms of whether or not they keep programs and such. This is this is actually uh, it, it's it's iced a program here and there. But when you come in and you're like, all right, I'm going to you had the red shirt to burn. We've got mm-hmm. no postseason. The team is forfeiting five weights. You're the, you're the ringer that's brought in. 
And how do you sit there and look at this this situation and be like, okay, I went from an, a well-funded ACC program, yeah, we were underachieving, to a school that's never had an All-American. Most people can't locate uh, Bowie's Creek on a map, let alone pronounce it correctly. And now this is this is where you're going to make your name for yourself. You and Kerry Colat are going to make your name for yourself. I mean, what is that transition like? Um, it was definitely different. Like, uh, it was nervous. Like, I did have that red shirt to burn, but, like, the band, like, I believe it's, like, two years, but Terry helped reassure me, like, no team has ever gotten a two-year band. They usually get their stuff back up. They get, like, a year to get it back up, not even all the way to where it's supposed to be, and they get that year back. So that kind of calmed my nerves a little bit about making sure I'd be able to go to the postseason my junior year. And then um, in that first year, like you said, forfeiting five weights, we probably had, like, maybe 15, maybe 15 guys on the team. So it was actually good. Like, that was a lot of individual attention I got from Coach Colette and um, the Coach Trevor Chin was with us then. And that was um, – that helped me, like, work and get the individual – more individual attention that I needed to kind of find the flaws in my best thing and correct those flaws and work towards um, getting better. And I used that season to kind of – lift and get stronger and get a little bigger. And that's part of the reason why I went uh, 133 that year and the next year, because I, I had gained some size. Yeah. Your, your, your attempt at 133 as you, as a junior year getting back in the lineup, didn't go as planned. You were, uh, you seated, but what was it about 33 that it, it seems like it didn't, you, you had the good success. You, you had some, some ups and downs, that it, but it ultimately seemed like it just didn't fit. What was the situation uh, at 33 that made you say, you know what? I need to go back down to 25. Well, I don't I don't think I was like undersized at thirty three. Like it wasn't that hard for me to make weight, but I didn't I wasn't a big thirty three, but um I never feel like I never felt like I got out muscled, but I couldn't wrestle the way like I wanted to. I couldn't move guys and ties like I wanted and get be able to get to my shots. Like usually once I got in on a leg I would be able to finish well, but just the the size of those guys made it harder for me to move them and get get my offense and my moves going, which I was able to do a lot better down at 125. This year, 25, going into that third day, you've, you've, you've beaten Freddie Rodriguez to, to become an All-American, and you know you've got one more college weigh-in. How hard was that cut for that last college weigh-in at 125? That, that was tough. I, right after um, – so I wrestled Freddie, and then I had another match that night against uh, Joey Dance. I didn't get done that till like, almost close to nine. Put my sweats on right away. Went into um, had some back rooms that had, like, bikes and wrestling mats and stuff and got on the elliptical and bikes and worked out for, like, 45 minutes. And I was sweating pretty good. Like, I was. The weight comes off easier, but it's still hard. Like, I was tired. I had four matches that day, and my body was just exhausted. Got done. I was still like, um, I think three pounds over for the next day. So I went back and, uh, it's hard for me to lose weight in the morning before weigh-ins. I don't know. My body's just not woken up. I can't get my sweat going as well. So I went back to the hotel, rested for about 30, 45 minutes, started my second workout around like 1045, went for about 30, 45 minutes and actually made it down to 127, which is what I'd weigh-in at the next day. So I was able to eat and drink a little bit that night to kind of help the recovery process get started early. So when you go through this tournament and you know people know what, they they still always remember your freshman year. And then when you yeah. go to Campbell, you kind of fall off the map a little bit in terms of not necessarily your ability but on on how people are paying attention to you. And then the yeah. start of the year you're in the all-star classic. It's an unofficial bout, but this is big for the school. It's big for you. What did it mean for you to represent Campbell at the all-star classic to start the season? That, that was an honor kind of just having a Campbell athlete be a wrestler, be invited to that and compete in it. I was, I wasn't sure if I was going to, cause we had a uh, try meet the next day at West Virginia. So just the transportation up and then making scratch 125 back to back days. But, um, we decided it was Coach Colat and I talked and decided it was good for the program and it was good for me too. Kind of uh, go out there, wrestle a top name guy, uh, McGee, and um, just wrestle, kind of get my confidence up and kind of start the year with a bang and try to keep the ball rolling the whole year. Throughout the season, you'd, you'd taken losses here and there, not just at tournaments, but 
in the Southern Conference. What's one thing that you think the wrestling team doesn't know about how tough the Southern Conference was at 125 this year? Well, we were. I mean, we had uh, three qualifiers at 125, like all earned their bid. They didn't. They were like top 33 guys. Um, App State's Vito Pisson and Freddie Rodriguez from SIUE, and then both Freddie and I were in the round of 12, and we beat we beat big name guys during the year. Like um, I played this scuffle, uh, Pisson beat guys, and he he had a lot of close matches with guys even before that year. Like he, I know he wrestled Kamara multi state to like a one or two point match, and like they were good guys. Even Chattanooga's Alonzo Allen was at round of 12 at the Southern Scuffle, and he. He's another tough guy, so there was there wasn't um an easy road in the Southern Conference, and I think that kind of helped both Freddie and I at nationals ready to be ready for like Big Ten competition because it wasn't just um like a bunch of slouches or anything in the Southern Conference. We had to work and train to do well. When you go through that draw, and a lot of people may not even notice that that you did lose to Freddie Rodriguez twice this season. Uh, once at the conference and then once, you know, in the dual meet, which was, was pretty ugly in terms of the score. Yeah. And then this is the guy yeah. you've got to beat to be an all American. I mean, what goes in your mind? It's like, all right, this guy's beaten me twice. I don't like that. I mean, how, how do you, how do you prepare for a matchup like that? Um, well, my coaches are even saying like, that's, that's one of the guys we don't want to hit. Like pretty much your only guy, just cause he's like so short. It's hard for me to get underneath and get to his legs. And he's got good hand fighting. I'm usually good on top, and he'd been getting out on me. Like, so, but going into that match, I was, I was coming off of um, two, two or three wins in a row, and he'd just lost pretty badly to Lezak in the um, quarterfinals. So I was coming off wins, and he came off a loss, which helped me. And then I basically said, like, I'm not, I'm not losing. Like, I'm getting on the, I'm getting on the podium this year, and I could see, like, I was. <clears throat> more focused. Uh, just, my head was in it, and I was wrestling great all day. I'm like, I'm, I'm gonna do this, and I could just tell, like, even from that first scramble, that I was gonna come out on top. I was just confident. But we look at the draw, and he's not the only guy that beaten you during the year. I mean, uh, Gabe Townsell really. They had his red shirt pulled. He comes out the scuffle. He knocks you off at the scuffle, and then. This is a guy, and you're up on him in the consolations, and then you end that match with you on your back, just trying to stay alive. I mean, what, what is what? I mean, say it's it's almost cliche to say what goes through your mind, but what's going through your mind in that moment where you're like, I just had this match won. Oh crap! I'm now just trying to stay alive. Yeah, he um he took a shot and kind of hit my nose. I think he broke it a little bit and was bleeding, so I was kind of stunned, <laughs> just belly down, and he came out. Up and he came out and gator rolled me and i remember thinking like i probably could have held him i was like oh, i'll go roll through with it and come back to my belly and then he caught me on my back i was just bridging hard i'm like it'd be easy to give up right now but i'm not giving up like i'm fighting like i was like no way this is happening like i'm not letting this happen i'm fighting like the whole time like and i knew there was short time so i was like i don't have to stay here for a minute i, I can fight for 20 30 seconds i can fight for as long as it takes till the end of this match. So when we look at some of your performances during the year, how much do you think that uh, your your lackluster performances in terms of dual meets, we're, we're dealing with the one-hour weigh-in. I mean, two-hour weigh-in, uh, Gilman match aside, it looks like you were, you were much more comfortable in a tournament setting than you were uh, a dual meet setting. I mean, how much does that one-hour weigh-in really affect you during the course of the year? That, that affected me a lot. Beginning of the year, I had my weight under control pretty well, and that, that helped me. And, um, but that one hour weighing, cause I'm, I'm the first weight also, like pretty much every time. So we wouldn't really draw. So just that recovery, I was cutting a lot of weight. I'm working out multiple times a day, like at least two workouts a day, pretty much all week to, to get my weight down and just couldn't, I just wasn't able to recover fast enough on a lot of things. Like my legs would be dead or something just couldn't couldn't get that ball rolling and then even like my stomach after weighing like putting the food back in me it's like I try to pace myself but a lot of times it's hard to and kind of chug up maybe a little bit too much water and that kind of threw me off so I tried to get back to it again at the end I started getting my weight under control not letting it balloon up as much after each weigh and then 
a two hour lands definitely helps the more recovery time, get like the food, get in me, get my energy back and then get a good warm up in and be ready for that first match. Was there ever a point this year you're sitting there and and you doubted yourself that you think, you know what, I don't know if I can do this? I never doubted myself. I knew if I um got my weight down right and was eating healthy and felt good, I knew I could I can compete with anybody, but sometimes that that weight cut out I'd be miserable. Like I'm so sick of making weight like this, but then like my coach has told me at the beginning of the year there's only like twenty times you gotta make one twenty five and especially near the end I'm like I only gotta make twenty five like a couple more times and like only one or two of them is one hour away and so just suck it up for this last part and then just get back to wrestling and doing what you love and just having fun going out there and competing. So when that match is over with Sean Russell and you, you ultimately, yeah, you lose 10 to three, but you do finish eighth. What was the time frame between you getting showered up changed before you sat down and be like, I need to eat a lot of food. Oh, it was, it was real fast. I, um, <laughs> so I finished up, went back, put my clothes on and stuff. Then my uh, parents, grandparents and uh, two of my siblings were actually out there. So I went up and talked to them a bit and, Talked about the tournament and stuff. So I didn't talk to him much all weekend because I was just trying to stay focused on wrestling. And then um, they stayed for a bit while I went back and showered. And then the Hard Rock Cafe was right uh, right next to our hotel, so we met down there. Um, had to wait a little bit to get in and get a seat. That's where a lot of a lot of the wrestlers went to eat. But went there. I think I had a ten ounce pulled pork sandwich, barbecue pulled pork. I ate all my fries all. Probably had like four sodas because I didn't have a soda in however many months. So definitely put the wind and then got hungry again about two hours later. Just kept eating. Well, at least you're in Carolina. You're in a, you're in a good spot for some Carolina barbecue now that the season's over. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's a lot, of, a lot of good barbecue places around here. And I'm going to drive a little bit to find some good places around Bowie's Creek. There's nothing right in town, but 15, 20 minute drive, there's some good places around that. Keep changing up, keep eating. Right, one unique thing that this transfer brought is it gave you an opportunity to be on the same team with your brother Austin, who was you know on the squad, 157 pounds as a true freshman. You guys, you're graduated high school uh, up in up in Maryland, Centennial High School. He's an eighth grader now. The opportunities you guys are wrestling on the same team. What was that like for you to go through this season with with your younger brother on the squad with you? That was awesome. I words can barely describe it. Just like we're really close, even though there's like a four year gap between us. We've always been like really close and talking to each other, and both really competitive. I think it helped us both during the year. We're we're competitive, especially with each other. Like we're each other's biggest supporters, but we're also trying to beat each other in everything we do. And that, even though we were a little bit weight uh, size difference, that definitely pushed us in the room. Like sprints like push ups, like anything, we were trying to beat each other and that pushed us and during the match if he would if I wrestled first, I would give him an energy to get up and go. Like if I if I won, he'd be all fired up or if I lost, he's like I'm gonna go out there and like avenge Nathan almost and and same thing with him when he won, it gave me energy to go out there and wrestle tough and it was awesome just like kinda of building off each other's energies. Like it's I'm always excited when my teammates win, but when my brother wins it's just that much better for me. Yeah, and this is also a unique situation for Campbell this year. This is one of the best seasons in school history. You guys won the Southern Conference, a school record five qualifiers to the NCAA championships in Division One. Do you think if if things are different, if things are like year one, so if you've got to go through this season forfeiting five weights, do you think you get to where you're at individually? Do you think you're an All American if the situation was the same? I mean, wrestling's an individual sport, so a lot of it's on you, but it helps having teammates around you who want the same goals and are motivated. Like it helps in practice. People are excited and motivated that we're doing well. And like you said, that energy builds up and you feel good. You feel like it's awesome to be a part of a winning team. Like you like, you like winning and it builds up energy and the, just the attitude in the room was better. Like it wasn't like, Oh, we're never going to win a dual meet. So like, what's the, like, what's the point almost like, Everyone was excited. They were hungry. That's the other thing about a young team. They come in hungry. They haven't 
been through the grind yet, so they're excited like the whole season. It's fun having that new energy and like guys picking each other up kind of thing. So I think that that played a big part in the team success, having that many guys that were hungry. I think that's why we did win the SOCON and sent that many guys to Nationals because people fed off that energy. What is the opinion of the wrestling program around students and other athletes at, at Campbell? Well, it's definitely changed since I first got here. They're almost seen as like kind of the problem team, like not smart, didn't do well in the classroom kind of thing. But now it seems like a lot of times like the hardest work is like I'll, I'll talk to athletes from other teams like, yeah, we see guys like running out in sweats and like 70 degrees weather and stuff. And like you guys come out like your clothes are soaked and, and they have a lot of respect for us and appreciation, which is awesome to have that. Um, that's what I like. I like that about Campbell. It's a little different from UNC because UNC is like a basketball school. Wrestling never got as much recognition. Then even coming back from nationals, there's professors tell me congratulations and just uh, like even the local like store owners like knew I wrestled and they're telling me congratulations. And the team got honored at the halftime of a basketball game for winning the SoCon title. And they honored me a little more with the being the first All-American and it's just awesome like seeing athletes that we knew who each other were but never really talked just come up and say congratulations or like hey are you the one that did well at nationals like congratulations and that's all and it's just a great feeling to kind of have the wrestling team be respected like that and almost like looked up to and almost like sought after like the other other teams on campus want to be like as successful as the wrestling team now and win a conference champion championship so it's it's a cool feeling being like on top for the school from a coaching perspective, what have you seen change through your coach Kerry Colat from when you guys were, were were part of the program at Carolina to now at Campbell? I mean, what's different about him? He um he seems almost like more happy and more relaxed. There's kind of like more red tape to go through to get stuff done at Campbell and or sorry at UNC and at Campbell. We can if he hasn't, you can go talk to the AD, like have a conversation with him and. And he just seems, he's older too, so he's got more experience, but he seems just all around like more happy, more relaxed, like keeping the mood light in practice when it um, needs to be light and more intense when it needs to be intense. And he just seems happy. He can get stuff done that he wants to get done. He's all around just in a better mood. From a training situation, Campbell gets their first uh, All-American in school history. SIUE got Jake Residori as their first Division I All-American. We saw the same thing with South Dakota State as those two teams have moved up. What are you seeing that you and, and guys like Jake Residori and Seth Gross and, and Alex Kocher have been able to do for programs that aren't primetime names in the sport of wrestling? Be like, look, you guys can go anywhere you want and succeed how big of is it how big of a deal is it for you and for campbell university that somebody has been able to be an all-american at that school um like you said i think it proves that like you can get it done if you if you have drive and you want to get it done you can get it done at a smaller school like you don't have to if you're not recruited even if you don't go to a big school like penn state or iowa if you even like not getting recruited by that you might not feel like oh I'm not good enough to compete with those guys, but I think like uh, Gross and them being in the finals, and like you said, Residori from SIUE, like you can you can still compete in small schools and go out there and get on the podium and make it to the finals. Like you don't have to be at one of those big a Big Ten school or a big name school to get it done. And I think it's already impacted. Like I've seen kids commit to wrestle Campbell on Twitter and stuff like I think it gets them excited that they can get into school here and go out and wrestle tough and be successful you know I've had an opportunity to be you know you and your dad and Fargo coaching with Team Maryland over the years and when the decision comes we're going to go circle back to the decision to leave Carolina and you know your dad's been around wrestling a long time what is that conversation like with your dad when you know you're leaving you know, a, a power five school that's got a pretty good wrestling tradition to say, I'm going to go follow Carrie to this school. Most people have never heard of. I mean, how does that, how does that discussion go with Cliff? It was different. Like he, 
Well, he knows Carrie personally too. Like they're they're friends from Carrie's time in Maryland, and um, he asked he he talked to Carrie about like is Nathan going to be able to be successful here? And we talked about it. And, and like, is this really what you want? Do you think you can still be successful with Carrie as your coach? Do you think, do you think you need a change? And we talked it out, like just honest with each other. And if he's like, if, if you believe he has a lot of trust in you, like if you believe that's what you need and you, you can still get it done at Campbell, what you want to do, then, then go to Campbell. It's, so close to Carolina, and you'll you'll still be with Carrie, and just, he just support. Once I made the decision, he just supported it and rolled with it. Do you think it was something that that you had gone through during that red shirt year and that year last year, even though you didn't place? That says, you know what? Okay, I'm sold. We're we're Austin's going there too. The way the direction the program was headed kind of sold Austin too. Like Austin would come down for camps and stuff, and. Just seeing the guys on the team, like how they were training, and so I, I had like inside information. Like I could tell them like how the team was training and the atmosphere in the room. And I think he really liked uh, the atmosphere and the guys on the team, like their attitudes towards wrestling. And I think that's what sold him. And just getting a year with me, that was a big decision for him to come here too. And I think that all those together kind of sold him. There seemed to be a real growth with the program this year. And, you know, I, you know, when, when I was in school at Old Dominion, Campbell was in the CAA with ODU. And I remember we were at a dual meet in the field house. I want to say it was probably 98, 99. And Gray Simons was the coach at Old Dominion. Dave Abel was the coach at Campbell. A lot of people don't know that both those guys were Olympians. There was 12 people, I think, watching this dual meet. And the SID is like, man, crazy duel. We got two Olympians coaching. And there's literally nobody there now. When when you say you've got an Olympian coaching Campbell, there's people around campus that are excited about it. There is there is there it's the growth there. I mean, just what I saw from you guys at the Virginia Duels, you know, the Hano brothers have improved dramatically. Quentin Perez, that guy has gotten really good. I mean, Josh Heil coming in with, you know, okay, everybody knows, okay, yeah, your brother's Dean. You saw a lot of growth. What was it like for you guys to grow together as a team, to beat teams like West Virginia, to perform well, be so close to beating Arizona State at the Virginia Duels? I mean, what went into that growth? Beating those teams helped with the growth a lot. Um, like giving the people confidence that I am ready for this D1 competition, these these big name schools and guys, and just keeping it. And we had enough guys on the team where. If a couple, if we had a bad door, a couple of people got down. We had enough guys to kind of pick the energy back up in the room again to kind of stay positive and stay working hard and not get caught in a lull and just keep working and pushing through that negative energy. And even us picking each other up, like coaches can't get to everybody, and us helping each other out in the room. Like I would drill with Josh High a lot and show him like little things here and there that he might be struggling with that the coaches didn't see or didn't have enough time to correct and just us wrestling with each other kind of working through the those areas and helping with his mental game too like that's a big part that the guys got better with over the season like Josh didn't start off strong but he finished really strong and I think me telling him some of my troubles like I had the same troubles you're going through like here's how I got through them if it works for you often if not like I'll keep working with you to get you through that to get you to the point you want to be. Now I've got to know a little bit about. I got, I want to know more. From, I've talked to Carrie about the, the the Hano brothers a little bit in previous appearances on the show, but uh, there's another another faction that they've brought uh, some some promotion to the school. Vlay wrestled at the world championships at the senior level in Las Vegas. Uh, Jerry, everybody's just calling him Jerry. I know that's not how you say his first name, but everybody just says Jerry. He was on the ju- at the Junior Worlds, was in a, in a bronze medal match. What it you, you factor in your performance, and then those guys doing really well on the international level and bringing focus to the school. I mean, talk about those the, having the Finns there. I mean, that's just an interesting. Did they're a Greco country? What are they doing wrestling folk style and freestyle? Yeah, they um they definitely went through an adjustment phase, and Jerry, especially this year, last year to this year. Just especially top and bottom, he he's got so much better on bottom. I think he got out. He didn't get ridden all this year. Where last year got ridden multiple times, but and he's a big dude too, like big athletic dude. And at all the matches, whenever whenever he walked onto the mat, people all start shouting, uh, chanting like Jerry, 
January. So that energy and just kind of them having a different background, like, makes people interested. Like, oh, these guys are from Finland. Like, what are they doing here? Like, just learning more about them brings more attention to the program and gets us attention at the matches and on campus and stuff. What's the coolest thing about attending school in Bowie's Creek, North Carolina? Honestly, for me, is the relationships with the professors. Like, at UNC, I had, like, over 300 people in my biology class. And then I come to I come to Campbell, and one of my classes, one of my favorite ones was uh, sports psychology. And actually talking with the professor, like, having conversations, not even as student to teacher, but just interacting and just talking and building these relationships is really cool to me and getting to know them and their life experiences and advice they give you and just to see that their passion to see you do well not just they're not just there to teach us they're there to actually help individuals succeed and make it through college and get a degree and get a job i for me that's really cool maybe because i was a little older when when i'm noticing it if you asked me when I, was, when I was a freshman i might say something else that i like about camel the best but I really like the how close the professors get with you and the, the small class size and the just the individual attention you get from them. So as you talk about classwork, what, uh, what, what were you majoring in when you transferred in, and uh, what are you looking for career goals now that your, wrestling, uh, your college wrestling career is over? Exercise science when I transferred. And since Campbell's a Baptist school, so they had a lot of the stuff that was um, like not electives that, uh, UNC were electives at Campbell, so I was pretty much taking all classes for my course. No more electives once I got to Campbell. My major, I was able to have the same major specializing in uh, sport management. So I was kind of wanting to stay in wrestling, go to coaching, or maybe work as an athletic director or something. So that's why I took sport management, kind of learned the business side more. And, um, <clears throat> Now that my collegiate career is done, I'm definitely going to take a little break from competing for a while. Kind of let my body relax and get a job. Um, I, I think I'll, I'll have a job opportunity, opportunity at Campbell and kind of maybe in the office, kind of see if that's what I like and go back into coaching. Cause I, I still want to stay around wrestling and work at a club or something. This is still a huge, huge passion, passion for me. And, if I could stay at Campbell, that'd be awesome because I'd get to be so close with Austin and see him practice and compete and everything. Well, also you can stick around and, and, and continue educating people uh, in, in terms of how the sport works. I know the last two sports information directors that you guys have had have had to learn a lot of wrestling on the fly. They've done a good job of promoting the program. But, you know, what's it like to try to educate not just people like, you know, people having class, but other athletes because – you know, where, where these athletes are coming from, Campbell wrestling is usually not something that they've got a whole big background in. So uh, with smaller class sizes, the the enrollment being what it is, you have an opportunity to really kind of sell the sport of wrestling to people to come to the matches. I mean, what's that opp- what's that opportunity been like? Um, It's really cool. There's, there's actually a lot of athletes. They make up a large uh, percentage of the population at Campbell. And you see them in a lot of your classes, so you build relationships with them in class and you kind of and they can tell when you go to their events too so we'll we'll go to soccer games even like swim meets and stuff and they like helping they like helping each other out and showing each other support so like if you go show them support they're definitely going to come out and show you support and a lot of it is, is being interested in what they do if you let them talk about what they're passionate about and genuinely listen they're more likely to listen to you and want to come see you do well and I think the team, not just me, like did a good job of engaging with other athletes and building relationships and going and watching them compete and letting them know you're there because then they want to come watch you compete and learn about wrestling more. They want to learn about what you're passionate about. And I think that's a big reason we started getting more support this year and more fans at our matches because we're, we're building relationships with other athletes. 
news has come out that the school is going to be investing significant dollars into facilities for the wrestling program. How does it make you feel knowing that that happens just shortly after you've accomplished something that nobody else in school history had ever done? It makes me feel awesome. I, I mean, I also wish I was still competing and got to be in that wrestling room and stuff. That'd be pretty sweet. But I know it's a lot of it is because of me, and I'm kind of honored to be able to help the future generations of wrestlers at Campbell to have, the, have a great facility and, and have that built for my brother while he's still here. And he gets to use the, the more wrestling mats and all this equipment and stuff and just really enhance their experience at, at Campbell when they come. And it's just awesome to kind of know that's like, it makes me feel proud that I helped, I helped a big part with Carrie too, but help get that done, get that support for Campbell Wrestling at the school. All right, Nathan, we've got a segment. We're going to call it short time because, as I've had to explain on every single show since we've started this 10-question barrage, the show is called Short Time, but so is this segment. i got 10 questions I'm going to throw at you. I don't want you to think about it too much. I want the first question that comes to your mind. Are you ready for the challenge? Yes. Yes, I think I'm ready. All right, question one. What's the best beating you ever received? Uh, Carrie Colette, no, no doubt. Just in the practice room, just tore me apart. Number two, you win the Olympic gold. What are you going to have for dinner? Um, if it's in the States, definitely just a nice American meal, either burger or steak. Overseas, try to find a burger or steak place. <laughs> Who's the best wrestler people don't talk about? Shoot, I don't even... Dean, I would say Dean. A lot of people always, I got to meet him. A lot of people pick him to get upset just because he doesn't win a lot. But he's one of the toughest people to score on. His positioning and his scrambling. And just, people always talk about all the other great guys. And, but he hasn't gotten beat in however many matches. And he's just, he always gets picked to get upset. And he always pulls through. Yeah, I'm never picking against Dean Heil ever again. That's just because, yeah, anyway. <laughs> Question four, all-time favorite flavor of Gatorade? Probably Riptide Rush. Seems to be a common answer. Question five, your favorite video game of all time? I didn't play a lot of video games. I'm going to go I'm gonna go old school with either Mario Kart or Super Smash Bros. Okay, I'll give you the Mario Kart. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to waive my uh, experience at Super Smash Bros. because I never played it. All right, favorite international wrestler? Probably Satellite. He's just so creative. He's fun to watch. What move would you rather have in your arsenal, the John Smith low single or the Jordan Burroughs reshot double? Probably the Smith single. I mean, the Burroughs double looks awesome, just flash people off their feet, but I also love scrambling. A lot of scrambles come out of that low single. And I don't know. I think that'd be something. I just like that one better. Who's one guy from history you'd like to wrestle? McDonough. I mean, I know we were in college at the same time, but we never got to wrestle. I just like to, I think it'd be a fun scrap with him. What about historical figure? Um, I'll say Butch Keezer. He's another Maryland guy. That... Sticking with the Maryland thing. I like it. I like it. You don't even yeah, have to explain. Right. Lloyd Butch Keezer, world champion. All right, funniest teammate. This can go back to high school or college. Actually, probably my roommate, Luke Stewart. Virginia boy. <laughs> yeah, he's just a goofball, man. He, he does the same jokes, but they're still funny. He, I don't know. He just always He's always cracking me up. <laughs> All right, and, and in question 10, what is your spirit animal? Probably a fox. That or a fighting camel, right? Yeah. Yeah, one of those two. All right. First of all, you know, we're done with that question. The, the fighting camels, the first time I ever heard about Campbell, I think it was in the early 90s and their basketball team had qualified for the NCAA championships. And they had to they had to play Carolina. And that was back when, when the Tar Heels had Eric Montrose at center. And it was like they had nobody anywhere close to their practice room that, that could – simulate a, a seven footer. So they had this like big broom that they were trying to do. And there's like, yeah, they're the fighting camels and come to find out the mascot's name is Gaylord after Gaylord Perry. This is, yeah. what is it like to be a camel? That's, I mean, I guess that's the most important question of the show. Not about what it's like to be an all American. What's it like to be a fighting camel? I, I, it's pretty awesome. It's very unique, which is kind of cool. And you always get to talk about it, which is awesome too. Cause everyone always asks about it. They're like, what's up with the camels? And you just kind of be like, it's our thing, man. Like, we're the camels. Camel, camels just rolls off the tongue. And it, it, you kind of roll with it. We're, we're proud of it. 
All right, Nathan, time we got left. Uh, couple, anybody you want to throw shout-outs to? Any final thoughts as, as it relates to your career, your performance, your your opportunities to represent Campbell University and, and, and Coach Cole at in this new era of Campbell wrestling? Um, definitely shout out my parents and my dad. My dad was my coach since I was little and always supported me. And when I told him my goals, he pushed me to him. He pushed me, and sometimes I didn't like it, but he pushed me. And same thing with Carrie. Carrie's been me, with me through thick and thin. And just all the support I've got, even through high school and college. And like when I chose to leave UNC, even friends I had on the team still supported me. And just all that support and love for me to do well. Is, I just want to thank those people. And I'm glad I ended my career on a good note and happy. Happy I was finally got to be on the stand, and now I'm want to stick with wrestling and help other people achieve their goals, getting on the stand, and see them be successful. All right, you wrestled 125. How much are you weighing right now? It was after lunch, about 153. <laughs> All right, I had to, to get... I'm start, starting to come back down, too. I, I was probably up close to 160 when I ballooned up. Yeah, I had to throw that one in there. We, we'd mentioned that prior to uh, us starting the episode, but I had to throw that one in there just because... Uh, Cries are going Nick Simmons on the on the way in. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, Nathan, hey, it's yep. good talking to you. Congratulations, and we'll see you down the line. All right, thank you. You are listening to the Short Time Wrestling Podcast on, I mean, with my daddy, Jason Bryant. You know, I'm starting to get a little bit of mileage out of this whole video game thing in the last two episodes, so... uh Nathan Kreiser, there's a little Mario Kart 64 for you. If this is your first time listening, I'd like to thank you for spending your time with me. I am Jason Bryan, the host of the Short Time Wrestling Podcast, news, reviews, previews, and interviews from all things in and around the sport of Olympic, college, high school, and even sometimes a little bit into that world of of the pro wrestling. We're going to talk with Jerry Briscoe on an upcoming episode. We're also going to be talking to several wrestlers coming off their performances in uh, the WWE. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to go into that world a little bit and make sure it is relevant to our world here in the world of college and Olympic. And uh, for lack of a better term, amateur wrestling, I don't really prefer the term amateur wrestling, but uh, since we're bringing up sports entertainment and they like to call it professional wrestling. Anyway, we're going to have some updates on that later in the spring and summer. But uh, we've just finished up with two All-Americans from the Southern Conference. Jake Residori was out there. You can listen to that by going to matttalkonline.com slash 322 to check that episode out. He was the young man from SIU Edwardsville. And now Nathan Kreiser finishing us up here. If you like this show and you're listening for the first time, whether it's on Twitter or on matttalkonline.com, you can go to matttalkonline.com slash get short time. That's going to take you right to the iTunes link in the iTunes store, whether you're on iOS or on your computer and you can subscribe to the show there. There are other ways to subscribe to this program. It has its own Android app. That's matttalkonline.com slash Android app or its own iOS app by doing the same thing. matttalkonline.com slash iOS app. Those are free and readily available for you to download, whether they be in the Google Play or the Apple iStore. So I don't even know if iStore is the Apple store, the App Store, whatever it's called. I don't know. There's too many, too, yeah, wackiness. So a lot of stuff. And if this is uh, not your first time listening, thank you for coming back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. i uh, leave a rating and review for the show by again, going to Matt took slash get short time. And you can rate and review from the, uh, the Apple store there, or you can do it on stitcher if you're listening on Android, but, uh, I don't want to throw too many calls to action out at you. I just know that I enjoyed the conversations this week with Jake Residori and with Nathan Kreiser, two programs that really don't get a whole lot of uh, discussion in the national wrestling scene. Of course, Kerry Colott changing things up significantly there at Campbell University, Bowie's Creek, North Kakalaki. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for uh, from a wrestling fan standpoint. It's always cool to see how. A new coach can change things, and uh, we're waiting to see what's going to happen with the University of Pittsburgh as they're uh, they're set to have some type of announcement at four o'clock Eastern on Friday. Uh, by the time uh, you hear this, that that announcement may have already come and gone, so I have no idea what that's going to be. Uh, a couple coaches have basically turned down the offers, uh, whether or not it was an offer or not. Um, don't know if anything officially was tendered, but uh, Tim Flynn and Pat Santora have pulled their respective uh, hats out of the proverbial ring when it comes to discussing those positions they're going to stay where they're at 
Last two things I'm going to throw at you. The Daily Wrestling News, matttalkonline.com slash news. Sign up for free. Drops in your email each and every morning. I'd say 360 days a year. Of the 365, there might be five days where I do not update this thing. So uh, you're going to get Daily Wrestling News from all around the country, all around the world. It's just because the college wrestling season is over does not mean news stops. So matttalkonline.com slash news. It'll be delivered directly to you to your email each and every morning, first thing. It's going to save you a lot of time. It's going to give you the links to any relevant story that's uh, that's good. It's not like anything that comes on the web. No, no, this is curated wrestling news. This isn't just like an auto whatever. I sit there and I look at the story and be like, yep, this is interesting. Somebody will, if, if, if I feel like this has some type of value or interest to you, I put it in the daily wrestling email newsletter. And finally, this is the sales pitch. If you like this network, you like what I provide, you like what the Matt Talk Online Podcast Network, Matt Talk Podcast Network provides at matttalkonline.com. Head over to matttalkonline.com slash join the team and uh, say it with a nice monthly contribution. We thank each and every one of you all the time about uh, your, your, ability to help us produce new shows for the wrestling hall of fame keep this show going cover some costs and uh, basically provide you with just already this year in 2017 already over 120 episodes of original on-demand wrestling content that's more shows are put out than there are days in the month folks and that's not just by by the two hands that i've got here the guys like earl smith the guys at, at black shoe diaries the the on the mat with kyle klingman richard emmel usa wrestling you know, the PA Power podcast, Track Wrestling is putting out a lot of content with Andy Hamilton and David Mercatani. All that content, Matt Talk Podcast Network. If you like it, show us some love at matttalkonline.com slash join the team. That's all I've got for you today. I'm going to go back and uh, build some more stuff because uh, apparently when you replace a floor, your wife thinks you can do anything. And uh, this weekend, it's uh, maybe a new railing for the hallway. Because uh, at five inches wide, I found out my nine-month-old can get her head through those wrought iron bars. Not something I want to ever see again. So uh, that's all I got. Thank you for spending your time with me because you've always got time for short time. And maybe a little Mario Kart. is part of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. For more wrestling podcasts, head over to matttalkonline.com.